Welcome back to another video right here on Freewell Photos. Today, I'm just going to edit a photo using the 10 minute quick challenge. Now, I'm using All One Photo Raw 2024. If you want to save some money, consider using my coupon code Freewell Photos 20. Now, let's jump into the computer and take a look at this photo. All right, so here we are inside the computer looking at a photo that I took at the Build conference earlier in the year. I'm going to put 10 minutes on the clock and we're going to start editing. So very first thing that I'm going to do, like I always do, is just go ahead and throw some Brilliance AI on there. Now, what I've done in my current workflows, if you will, is I leave the tone and color open and then I click Brilliance AI. I think I've gotten to a good point where I have the Brilliance AI tuned in or fine tuned where I want it to be uh, percentage wise. And what I really want to do is take a look down here at tone and color. So this is my way of using this similar to an AI auto feature, if you will. Now, what I like to do is check my um, color profiles or my camera profiles and using the arrow key on the keyboard, I'm just going to press down and up and I'm just going to cycle through these until I get to something I like. I really like the camera neutral on this particular look. It goes for my style of images. Uh, camera portrait also looks pretty good, but it seems to favor the reds way too much for me. So and then these are the DCP profiles. Everyone should probably have something. Uh, think of these as the JPEG presets that your camera comes with. Um, but I think I'm going to go with camera portrait, at least for this first one, right? I'm going to use some snapshots and we'll make that happen. Uh, but what I think I need to do is really dial back these reds. So that tells me I need to go into a color enhancer, come over here to the color enhancer. And I'm just going to scroll down and let me just minimize some of these things. I never really get a full 10 minutes because I'm usually always explaining uh, as I'm going along, but that's okay. Then I'm just going to desaturate the reds. Yeah, somewhere around here. So if I turn this off and on, it's a fairly subtle adjustment, but uh, when you're looking at lighter skin tones, the reds seem to always be prominent and you may want to reduce those. Now, what I want to do is reduce it on just the subject because I think that, well, I guess in this image, it doesn't really matter, but in your image, you may want to pay attention to whatever else is happening. Uh, I'm not going to spend time trying to fix that, but I'm just going to call this red reduce. All right. So now I think it's really time to start stylizing. But what I've done is I've added in this red reduction. Now, one of the ways that you could do this is just come over to one of your presets and hold down the command key and it'll uh, add it in or the option key. One of those two. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is click on layers. I'm going to duplicate this layer and then I'm going to right click on the topmost layer and I'm going to hit new stamp layer. All right. What this does is it gives me essentially a blank layer with all of my initial edits. And this is the one that I am going to create all of my different looks off of in the next six minutes. So uh, let's just go ahead and rename this stamped and let's get to work so we'll close down the layers and now i'm gonna go initially with a black and white i know i just did all that work to make the color tones but i feel like i owe it to myself to do something black and white because there are just a lot of contrasting colors here and or uh, tonal values i'm sorry not colors so I'm going to find something that gets me pretty close. I actually like this. It's like an elegant, um, really beautiful, soft black and white look for the image. And I'm just going to go ahead and name this snapshot one uh, or edit one. All right. And now I'm just going to go back to the original and I've got my black and white. I use the black and white film preset. Many of us will have access to that. What I really enjoy working on my photos with is the dark forest presets. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on 
this one right here. Uh, I didn't even sample it. I just know that I like Dark Forest 2. That seems to be my uh, most used Dark Forest preset. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and put a little heart on it. Uh, the second most used, I guess, would be the Dark Forest one. Um, but what I'm going to really do here is come up to the opacity slider and I'm just going to pull down on that because I think it is just a tad bit too strong for the overall image. But I do like this particular preset, the way that it is impacting the image. So I'm going to label this edit two. All right. I still got four minutes left. We'll come out of dark forest. And this is one of those times when it really does help to know what presets you enjoy using. Now, let's say you don't use presets at all. Well, what can you do? So I'm just going to go ahead and create my own style. The first thing I think this photo needs is a glow. Usually this is a finishing touch, but I just feel like this photo will uh, really benefit from having a glow. And let's see if one of these other uh, blend modes will work well here. And I'm not a fan of anything except for the soft light. Actually, soft light strong. I think that that looks really good. So that's my first effect, and I'm putting that all over the image. Now, everything that I do, I'm going to put underneath here because I think that that's going to make the most sense. Uh, what many people like to do is add colors to their images. So I'll add a LUT underneath the uh, overall glow filter here. And I'll click on color grading. I'm going to stay in the realm of things that everyone would have. So if you see a look that you that I create that you really like, you can just recreate that for yourself. And I think I'm going to go with something that's a little bit more of a warm tone. So Elton seems to be good. It's a contrasty warmth, uh, in my opinion. However, it's a little too strong, so I'll just pull that down to about here. We can go before and after, and you can just see what that's adding to the overall image. Now, what I think this image would really benefit from is a little bit of texture, especially for that background. So let's go ahead and hit add. We'll click on textures, and I'm going to go with a grunge texture for the background, and I think that this is a good juxtaposition uh, to the overall image except for I don't want it over my model. So let's see how good the AI masking picks up on the background. So we'll click on masking, hover over the mask AI region, and then select background. Does a pretty good job. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And I'm going to go with paint in, and I'm going to apply that. On one's gonna think itself through. And hopefully it's going to apply that only to the background. And you know, these types of photos like in the studio, this was a setup that was um, in the main floor. Uh, these types of photos or setups work well for uh, selecting the background. And you know, when there's very clear background, looks like actually, now that I'm looking at it, looks like maybe, no, maybe she did have something on her uh, there. So, okay, I'll just go ahead and go with edit three. And these don't have to be perfect. Again, these are just things that I can do with a single photo in 10 minutes. Uh, so far, I've gotten three edits I've been using. I use two presets. I'll make one more. Uh, let's go with a uh, vintage filter. Now, I don't use this filter all that often, um, but, you know, sometimes you can get some really cool looking things. Um, in fact, you know what? This is inspiring me to do something like a split tone look. So I'm going to go with till, but I'm going to click here. Uh, come over to my blending and I am going to apply this to the shadows and uh, I'll apply it to the highlights and we'll pull the range down and then I'm going to add another vintage filter here uh, and I'm going to go with the split P come back to blending change this over to my shadows no that doesn't look too good uh oh, this might be a bust, but that's okay. That's the whole point of doing things like this. You just experiment to find what may or may not work. And I think 
that looks pretty decent uh, overall. If I hold down the forward slash or backslash key, you can see the before and the after. What I would probably add to this is maybe a glow. Uh, glows typically just pull photos together. You know, something like this, maybe pull down. And uh, yeah, I think that that gives me my third one. So I'll make a snapshot, edit four. So there you have four edits in 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. This is our original and I really like the original and I got to compliment the 2024.1 release because these things just jump up on the screen almost instantly, which is really cool and uh, very helpful. But let's look at edit or let's start over with the original. Uh, so here's the original and I actually enjoy this. So I would actually count this as an edit. And then I have edit one where I just added a little bit of a glow. This is one of those, you know, I wouldn't call it a high end beauty retouch, but it's just something fun. Then we have edit number two where I got a little bit more into my own particular style and it's gritty, it's contrasty, it's dark, it's edgy. Uh, and I think that it's a pretty interesting take on the ballet dancer with these little uh, silk ribbons. And then I went with the edit three where it's also the same idea of what I've done before, but I focused in or allowed the light uh, the tones that were, you know, contrasting and sculpting her body, uh, sculpting her face and, you know, everything that we're looking at in the image. I let those kind of take lead in this particular edit. And then, of course, I just made a, made a fun one. Uh, edit number four. This one was just to show you that you can explore sometimes they don't come out the way that you want. And, you know, it was a last minute edit but I really enjoy what I got here. So there are five edits that, you know, I would be happy with four of them. And, you know, that fifth one, it is what it is. That's just the way it goes when you play around with a piece of software and you just enjoy editing and testing out different things. Now, I did use a lot of presets here. And that's one of the benefits of using a software like on one where you can just apply a preset and start working fairly quick after you've gotten your base edits. Now, I talk about this quite often. I know a lot of people, they don't like using presets, but using presets really does get you moving a lot faster. And sometimes if you have a preset that you use a lot it can become your signature look like i personally know i enjoy contrasty images so a lot of the presets that i make are going to be contrasty a lot of the presets that i gravitate towards are also contrasty uh, or a faded contrasted type of look so hopefully you found some value in today's episode if you did you already know you got to smash the like button but also consider sharing this with someone who you think would find value in these editing techniques. And if you want to pick up All One Photo Raw, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. Now, in the comment section below, let me know how you like to edit your images. If you're enjoying these 10 minute quick edits uh, and the information that I'm sharing throughout them, if there's something that you have a very specific question on, please drop it in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer it either in the comments or I'll make a video. So with that, until the next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.